Yeah, this is our fin this is our, our white undercoater. Alright. Premium cat white or uh, pre-cat. Premium pre-cat. Pre-cat means pre-catalyzed. When I buy this, um, I can I also buy post-catalyzed uh, where I'll mix it myself. But the pre-cat, when I order this, they'll um, they'll put the catalyst the catalyst into the material. And, and mix it up before they send it down to me and that gives me a shelf life up to I want to say maybe 60 days it could be 90 days I'm not sure it doesn't matter because I spray within I try to order my material to be used within at least 30 days of the time I when I take possession of the material so um, they say you can go up to maybe three months but I'm usually about a 30 day window on my materials all right so at any rate, this is the Exalta. Um, this, this can, I'm stirring and I'm mixing with that one, but the, I noticed that the newer cans now are coming through with the Merriam label. And I, you can see these tabs are already bent up. There's only about a half a pail in here. Um, I take it out of a full pail, and I just keep using these pails over and over again just to mix them up. And you'll see that this says... Um, now that says white seal or unmixed, but I've already mixed that, so I'm not paying any attention to what I wrote on there. All right, and this is um, her finish. This particular job is a, uh, uh, her name is Liz. I, I, I write on the can just so I know that I'm using a current can and I'm not using material that maybe sat in the shop too long, uh, maybe three, four, or five months or whatever. But like I said here, you can see the sealer here, white Liz sealer. All right, it's already been thinned. Okay. Um, is that sealer? Or is that the finish? Yeah, that's undercoater, so that's ready to go. And here we have um, the finished coach. Okay, and we have another can with the what with the Amerium label. I've got to talk to my salesman to find out exactly what the difference is between the. I mean, you're, I'm still seeing the uh, uh, Exalta name on here, and I used to see the Valspar name on there, and the Valspar is gone, Exalta is still on there, but now I'm starting to see a Merriam, and I got to talk to them and find out exactly what that what that means, what that is. Okay, so at any rate, let me let me let this stuff sit here for a while. All right, and then I'm going to come back. And I'm going to put the second coat on. I'll hit those edges again. These are some screws that I'm, I'm going to be using during the installation process. And I like to use, I don't like to see the chrome head screws inside my cabinets when they're painted white inside. So I spray up the screw heads here. And then we install the cabinets. And then once, um, once that's done, I'll go over it with a small spray gun, touch them up so they look a little better. I like the inside of the cabinets to look just as good as the outside, you know. So at any rate, this is going to sit now. I'm going to let this sit for about another five or six minutes, and then I'm going to come back and I'll put the um, the final primer or undercoater. I'm going to come back now. I'm going to put that final coat on of the undercoater, and then we'll be sanding that, and then we'll be putting the finish coats on.
All right, there's two things happening here. You notice I've got multiple coats along the edges, and um, only two full coats with the, when I, when I sprayed flat, this, the main surface, I, I box coated. I went the first coat going this direction, and the second coat going the long way, all right? That's called boxing your coats. That makes sure you get a more even coverage with your gun, and, and you kind of eliminate any striping effect, all right? Now, it's not so critical now because this is, like I said, you can see here, this is only the, um, the undercoater that we're spraying right now out of that gun, which is sitting over there. But, um, yeah, so there's two full coats laid on flat, boxed, but I've got probably six or seven coats along the edges. That's for, several, for a couple reasons. Number one, the edges, like I said, they do soak up more than the face of the wood. So they require more coats to, to get as much coverage on there. But also, when I go to sand, it's very unlikely when I'm sanding that I'm going to, in these large flat areas, that I'm going to go through the lacquer. If I'm going to sand through, it's always going to be on an edge, on the corners or the edges. So by having multiple coats of primer, um, five or six coats hitting on those edges, uh, that's given me the benefit of having more buildup and less chance of sanding through that primer when I do go to sand this. All right, and um, so yeah, that's it. Now I'm going to let this sit. Um, it's it's 7:30 in the morning right now. I'm going to let this sit, and probably about 10 o'clock. Uh, now after lunch, we're going to go over to the job. I have that a dental appointment at 11.30, so when I get back, then we're going to go and we're going to, uh, we'll sand these prime coats and we'll start to put the finish coats on, all right? I've already got a bunch more already sitting over here. These have already been prime painted the other day, and um, they've been, they've, they've had the edges sanded, but not, not the flat, so they've got to get sanded. And there's, a, there's another pile over there still got to be put together, but uh, here's that horizontal sander I was talking about. I don't really like using this on my finished cabinet doors. After I have run them through this sliding table saw, they're perfectly square. And if I were to go and try to sand the edges of the door on here, and I've got 40 years experience using this saw, so I have a good, not saw, I mean sander. So I have a good feel for it, and I don't really think I'm going to sand them out of square. But there is the possibility they'll go slightly out of square. And where all these doors, when they're hung, are only going to have a 16th inch gap between the doors. If I start to get them out of square, even a 32nd, a 32nd off on this door and a 32nd off on the door adjacent it, you're going to see that. That gap is not going to be a perfect 16th inch gap all the way around the door. So that's why I like to sand these, like I said earlier, um, using my... Um, my disc sander here, the Merker. I like to use this. Um, and I, I, like I said, I like to hold it on edge because I can look down and I can tell that I'm not on an angle, that I'm flat. If I'm holding the door up and looking at it this way, doing the edge, there's a, there's a possibility I'm going to be twisting my hand and not noticing that I'm standing slightly. And then I'm going to go through on through the the primer into the bare wood. And you try not to get through the primer. I mean, I come back, uh, sometimes you can't help it, you're going to go through, all right? But I'll, I'll come back before I put the finish coats, any place that I've gone through where I've sanded through this sealer and show a little bit of bare wood, then we will go over and we'll recoat that with primer. Now these have had the edges done. Let's look and uh, maybe we'll see some spots. Yeah, I don't know how good you can see. Right here, Walt did sand through just a little bit through there. Okay. He's got a good feel for it, Walter, one of my guys. Um, he does a pretty decent. He already went through with the small pad. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. Oh, this. All right, this is, um, I'm not sure who makes these. But it's like a foam pad with grit. All right. This is what we sand the edges with. All right. These edges here, and then he sands in here all the inside where I can't get at with the 
pad sander that I'm going to use, which is this sander right here. We use this to sand all the flat, the large flat areas. All right. Uh, again, with with a 240 40 paper, 240 grit. Um, you can go as high as 240 or higher on your primers because again, it's not so much a physical bond; it's more of a chemical bond between the primer and the finish coat. So that's why um, I can use a. I don't know what those marks are, but. Actually, what, what I did, we sand, I prime painted these, and these already have all the holes bored. I'm not sure if this is a panel or a door. This is a door, okay? But you can see, I took these over to, the, the cabinets are already installed on the job, and I, I, I took these over and hung them just to make sure they all fit good, the gaps are all good, and now we've brought them back here, and we're going to sand them. We're going to sand the primer and put the finish coats on. I like to do that if I can, if the job is kind of local, but um, if I have the cabinets here in the shop, but well, we always do that, uh, that's not a problem, but um, sometimes you just can't help it. I had to get the cabinets over there so that the granite could be ordered for the countertops or quartz. In this case, it's quartz, not granite. And uh, this way the tile guy could put his backsplash up, and while they're all doing that, we're back here making the doors and we'll go hang them afterward. And that also benefits me if I don't have the doors on the cabinets while the countertops are being installed and the tile backsplashes I don't have to, or the appliances I don't have to worry about those guys um, inadvertently scratching my cabinets my cabinet doors all right they do that so they don't do it on purpose but sometimes you can't help it but you get a little nick here and there or scratch or something so um, these will be hung after everybody's all done this is one of the last things we do on the job we'll go hang all the doors this way I know there's no chance of anybody, any other workers on the job causing any damage. Here now, you can look right here. Let me get over here. I don't know if you can see it. You can see right here, this has got a little bit of sand through here. All right. So that, that, that'll get touched up with the um, primer before. Well, I'll hit it again. With, I'll spot prime these spots that have been um, sanded through. And then... Um, then we'll sand them again and put the finish coats on.